Now, you all remember the famous Bugala Bunny, don't you? Yeah. What's up, What's up Jack? Oh, just... I love raw carrots. You know, I don't like them cooked. They're good for you. But I love them raw. I like them anyway. I used to not like them cooked, but I do now. Well, I do too. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to go out in the garden, just pull them up, knock that dirt off, and eat them right mm -hmm. like they were. And radishes that way? Mm -hmm. My, oh, my, oh, my. I got some of the prettiest radishes the other day at the grocery store, and I'm getting ready to put in my crop of radishes uh, for tomorrow. You. People today would be appalled at the thought of going out and pulling something out of the ground and eating it mm -hmm. without washing Well, it. yes. But hey, we all lived to tell yep, it. That's right. You grew up on a farm doing it, and I visited one all the time, and we're still here. That's right. So uh, we haven't so gotten anyway. any of those awful things. What are we doing today? Well, you know, I thought a little bit later on Ooh. I'd go, oh, you mean here on the show? Yeah, oh, I, well, I don't be have any idea. I hope Darling, the witch is going to tell us. You need some moisturizer. <laughs> It's been so dry. Thought we have a oh, witch loose in the studio. Well, I guess she wanted the big dose of moisturizer. Dear Fat Boys and Doris, <laughs> is it true that Swiss steak is better when it comes from the side of the cow? Is on when the side of the cow is on the higher side of the alp. The side of the lower level is tough. <laughs> See drawing. What? And well, here's the drawing. And. Uncle Jim is going to get a close shot. See that cow standing on the side of the hill? Is that and what so that the is? The one closest to the top <laughs> it is uh, tender, and the leg on the other side is right tough because it supports the weight of the cow. Well, you know, I grew up on a farm, and I really don't think I ever knew that. That's well, just amazing. Yeah, you learn it is. Something I didn't day. know that they were like that, but I guess. And signed Worth Cheese of New Bern, North <laughs> Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see, we're doing today, you're doing, Bly, what are you doing? I'm doing Swiss steak, you know today? Yeah. Uh, sent in by Kathleen Wright of Roanoke, Virginia. And I'm, oh, that's nice, and I'm doing Buckeye Garlic Mashers, sent in by Martha Stackhouse of Pittman, New Jersey. Buckeye Garlic Mashers? Mm-hmm, well, you'll see, you'll I see. I reckon I will, and very lovely. And semi-voluptuous Doris is going to be in after a while. She's got summer cold butter bean salad. I know you'll Bleah! love that. <laughs> yeah, Johnson. unclean. Johnson, I it? hate lima beans. He's, he hates beans, period. I despise the beans of the young limes. I don't think I've ever run into anybody that hated the beans. Oh, beans but, uh, is everybody's friend. Well, for the mine. most part. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> well, Larry, on mine, just so people will know what's going on, uh, you have to have five large baking potatoes, and, and I think by large, that's the kind that you get in a lot of restaurants, you know, those huge whoppers, uh, but five large baking potatoes, and you, you cook them until they're tender, along with a, an entire head of garlic that's uh -huh. been peeled. Good heavens. So uh, that's all I want to say right I'll now. I'll bet your house was odiferous. With well, the I haven't smile. done it yet. I brought it over here to do it. You oh. think I'm crazy? <laughs> Boy, are we all happy. Uh, tell me. The first thing i got to do is take an onion. It says a medium onion. This looks a little on small to medium size, but we won't get too picky. And you have to slice it thick, 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 four pieces. Doris, Next do we have do a colander? As you take these over here and this you put them into calendar. a slow cooker. <laughs> We did a Swiss steak recipe many years ago that required pounding the dickens out of it, and I mm -hmm. think you did it, and yep. uh, pounding in all of the, the uh, flour and all that. But this one doesn't require any of that. This is a very slow, methodical method. And what you have to do is get beef round bottom steak, or round steak. And I got some real pretty ones, about three quarters inch thick or a half inch thick or so. Very lovely. So what you, oh, well, wait a minute, I can't do anything with that until I do something else. So well, the first thing you have to do is take them out of the package. <laughs> so I think I can handle that. But the next thing I have to do, I sort of have to do this in steps, is you've got to make up the, the uh, seasoning that it goes into. So the first thing we do is we take a little flour, you call specifically for two tablespoons, We'll just drop a couple of those in there, like so. Greatest of plenty. Just plain old 
flour and uh, stick that over there. And into that goes a half a teaspoon of paprika, give or take a little, and a half a teaspoon of salt, optional, and you know that I opt for it every time because you never outgrow your need for salt. And, and they recently came up with a study that says that salt may not cause high blood pressure. Figure that one out. Doesn't make any sense to me. A little black pepper also goes in there. Just a wee little bit. And could I have that? Oh, you no, certainly can. I'll no need charge. it later on. Thank you so much. Great people we are down here. I'm the cooking <laughs> chief set. And now you just diddle that around and mix it. If I had a little uh, fork, I'd probably be a little better off, but that's okay. The uh, kitchen help here has just <laughs> given up on me because I got haughty earlier before we started. Now, what you have to do, oh, bless your heart, thank you. The kitchen help has come through after all. I appreciate it very much. And make sure you just kind of mix that around real good. Well, I hear Hammerstrom on camera one has got bubble gum today. That's all he can afford to eat right now. Now, what you do is you dredge your, your round steak in that and do it Put quite a bit on it. Don't be wimpy about it. Don't be afraid to. You know, we're going to have to go over to the Hammerstrongs. Why is that? Have, have we been you, invited over? Didn't know, but that has never stopped us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're putting in a new kitchen at his house. Is that so? Yeah, that's why he can only chew bubble gum and can't afford to eat. Will it have all the latest technological advances in it as far as cookery is concerned? Yes, he says it will. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Take this and you put it on top of the onions, is what it says, down in your cooking pot, like so, see? Two of them in this particular case. I tell you, this smells wonderful. I, you know, all, now you are from the, the school. I mean, you taught school for years and years and years. And as you know, every, I don't know about down here, but where I came from, every banquet that was ever held in the school cafeteria, they had Swiss steak. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that? Tell me that. It's just easy to cook. Because you can do it in a big you, pan and you, you just can bake do it. it in a big pan. It's easy. You got gravy to cover up any sins of the knife. And, <laughs> well, and you know, it just works real well. All those years, I never could identify what it was. No one would ever tell me. Well, it was some of that government meat problem. Well, that, perhaps it's best I didn't know. So I'm put that one down in there, too. See that? Oh, that's and good. And I'm going to put just a little more salt and pepper on top of that, just for safety's sake. Go ahead. All right, I've got a stick of <sighs> butter. Actually, I'm using a margarine uh, that needs to be melted in the electromagnetic uh, oven over here and let me melt that and that's going to go in with the potatoes here in a few minutes. You know Johnson I thought of you today and I wish you could have been with me for just a brief couple of minutes. You know I do see some of the funniest things going Campbell, down Campbell Avenue in oh, front of my office. They installed about a year ago a telephone booth directly across from my building and my business partner Marty Hull loves to go and dial me up on it just for oh, laughs and I say where are you calling from he says well look out your window and then he yeah. waves to me it's a going joke but anyway today I was sitting at my desk working real hard <laughs> and I looked out and there sat a woman on a folding chair making a call <laughs> I just thought that was the funniest thing I well, ever Well, you know, seen. I have to pass that <laughs> your place every day, sometimes twice a day, going to the theater to uh, be in the play I'm working in right now. And I'll tell you, Campbell Avenue is a trip. It's crazy. In Rona. It's just nuts. You can see anything you want to see oh, on Campbell me, Avenue. excuse me, I didn't mean to get in your... Now, the next thing I have to do is start chopping a few things preparatory to the next step. And uh, you take... Uh, a, a small uh, peeled carrot and a small rib of celery and you chop that up. So I'm just going to do a little choppy thing right now. All right. Well, I'm going to start mashing on these potatoes. Oh, right. do it. Just mash them one at a time. <laughs> mash each and every vegetable. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. These are supposed to be put through a food mill at this point. And I have a real nice one that's real pretty, and I cleaned it up and tried it out this morning. Worked like a jewel, and I came off and left it at home. So I'm going to do it the hard way with ye old potato masher. 
and I hope I don't have to get Doris to come in and mash them. Oh, I'd love to see her do it. And this mashes the garlic right up. I think she's in a mashing mood today. Mm -hmm. Mash. She you. said she had just gone to a mash, or was that a mosh? I can't remember which, but anyway. It was the monster mash. This is the way your mama did this, you know. Your mama. And when your mama felt just as bad as you did, she still did it for you anyway, mm -hmm. didn't she? Yes, she did. See? What goes around comes around. Well, you're doing a great job of it. Well, it's... Now, you missed one there. <laughs> now, I'll tell you, now you add in the stick of melted butter. Uh-oh. I didn't say this was a healthy recipe, <laughs> folks. I could just eat that the way it sets right now. Just pass it over here. You don't have to mess it up with anything mm -hmm. else. Just give me that, and I'll sit down and be a happy boy for the rest of the day. I'm going to... Well, I just hate to interrupt. Do we have a, maybe we have a slow-mo of that uh, mash thing. Now I have to put in a <laughs> cup, or a half a cup, rather, of half and half. Half is about where I'd like to be right about uh -huh. now. <laughs> Which half is that, by the way? The back the half. The bad half. <laughs> All right, now I will continue to to squirt around with this. You go ahead. Well, I, the only thing I have to do is another. I, I, I'm using up some stuff, so I'm, it says one peeled carrot chopped. I'm using two because I like carrots and I had an extra one left and I hate to waste it. Waste not, want not, so I'm chopping that up. And that goes in there. I love carrots. Mm -mm -mm. I certainly do. Okay. Now that goes in right on top of uh, the meat. Just put it in there, all of that. This just smells divine, it smells wonderful. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, it's a good recipe. Now the next thing I have to do is take a, a, a big old, old look at this one. It's got one of those advertisements written on it. Oh yeah, so they'll know hmm. that it's a pepper when you get up to the cash register. Okay, so you make sure you take the little signs off your vegetables anymore, something that we're having to now get used to. And we have a green pepper, and I'm just gonna take the insides of that out. And what you do is you slice this into real thin slivers. And while we're doing that, why don't we just, uh, I'll give my recipe, and Mr. Bryce, right. you can give yours. I have just added about a half a teaspoon of black pepper to this. Well, for heaven's sakes, couldn't you have added it on camera? <laughs> <laughs> What's taking up 10 seconds? Okay, the Swiss steak. One and a half pounds of round steak, three quarter inch thick, or thereabouts. Two tablespoons of plain flour to dredge it in, and with that you mix a half a teaspoon of salt, a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of paprika. And then on top of all that, well actually you set that down uh, on a medium onion sliced real thick and then you throw all your vegetables on top of your meat. That's uh, peeled carrot chopped, small rib celery chopped, and one 15 ounce can of tomato sauce or a can of chicken or mushroom soup undiluted. I have gone for the uh, tomato sauce today. And a small green pepper cut into strips which I'm doing momentarily. Mr. But John. do it real slow. Oh, I will. <clears throat> uh, the Buckeye garlic mashers requires five large baking potatoes peeled and quartered, one small head of garlic peeled, one teaspoon of salt, a half cup of butter melted, one half cup of uh, half and half, and pepper to taste. And that's all you need. And the recipe is from Martha Stackhouse of Pittman, New Jersey. Well, in a couple of minutes, we'll have the lovely Doris in here to show her recipe and tell us what's in it. But right at the moment, we're going to take this and, and just slice this real thin because this goes on top of the steak. And you don't want, you know, I don't remember that there was, I guess you can make this stuff different ways, like about like anything else, but I don't remember that there was peppers on no, top of No, we it. never had, when Mama made it at home, we never had it. For one thing, peppers give, everybody in my family gets indigestion with peppers. Uh-huh. So, but I'll eat it, be glad of it. 
Well, it's real good, and besides, it's been cooking for about 15 hours now. I uh -huh. can't imagine be a thing in there; it would hurt you. <laughs> it's all been diluted and everything else. And you know, I'm so concerned about uh, El Nino out there in California oh, really? coming through and ruining all the vegetables. Uh -huh. That all of us people on the East Coast are going to be hurting for certain this spring. Well, I was Until watching. It comes up in our yards. I was watching the Today Show the other day, and they actually had a man on whose name was Al Nino. Nino. <laughs> he said that he had been blamed for everything. Felt pretty sorry for the guy. He seemed a nice enough fellow, but beyond his name, there just wasn't much he had to uh -huh. say or offer. Okay, now you take this and you put that in there on top. We don't have to say that this is right pretty. And then to that today, I am adding a can of tomato sauce, uh, and just take that and pour Which, it of around. course, is not 16 ounces, I bet. Well, of course not. It's 15 ounces. Yep. And I should have bought another can. No, and that's all right. Oh, it does say 15. Doris says... There's a recipe that's up to date. How about that? How about that? And that goes in there. And then what you do is you cover that. Let me show you how you cover it. There you go. You cover that. And you can do one of two things. You can either put it on low heat for eight to 10 hours, which means that you put it in as you're going to bed and it'll be ready by the time you get up the next day. Or you can put it on high for three to four hours. Mm -hmm. So anyway. You know, you can cook your um, corned beef in those slow cookers. I just love mine. I use it all the time. And now the very lovely Miss Doris is going to come in and uh, tell us about her recipe for the day. Miss Doris is making her way into, okay, here we go. Well, isn't this a prissy little presentation? Uh, Look at this. Well, well, my dish was very simple too today, and it only took a few ingredients, and I wondered about it when I first made it, but it turned out to be pretty good. You and it's right pretty the way you finished it well, all I, out I, there. Well, if you go somewhere or something, I feel like you had to dress it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. It, it, it uh, didn't have any color for television. Did you raise those gherkins yourself? No. No. Oh, okay. I used to make uh, Are they make sweet? pickles. No, they're dill. Dill. Oh, and we're glad you warned us about that. <laughs> Looks but, like you could have thrown a little pepper on top of it. Uh, you know, the funny part of it is it um, doesn't call for any, any seasoning. It has, uh, you take two packages of frozen baby lima beans or butter beans and cook them uh, according to the directions. <laughs> A 10 ounce, and you can find that, uh, uh, no, 12 ounce can of shoe peg, the white corn, um, and then one cup of Hellman's mayonnaise and one bunch. Watch your, watch your mouth. Well, that's Go the way. Well, it says Hellman's mayonnaise. But I, but I think if you use any other kind, it would be just fine. And I don't even know oh, if I used isn't it. Isn't that sweet of her? Because <laughs> I say use that. whatever the coupon is, and that they tripled it at a certain store. <laughs> but anyway, that, that's all you put in it, and I, I, it doesn't have any kind of seasoning in it. And I did add salt when I cooked the uh, the butter beans, but it call, it doesn't call for any Maybe some chopped fresh dill would be really good in but chopped dill. But absolutely nothing. Stuff. But it, it tastes pretty good, and it, it's not too bad. Oh, Doris, aren't yeah. you sure you didn't leave something out? No, but later on I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I still think it could use some uh -oh. pepper or something. No. Dogs must have eaten No, it no. Uh, I uh, I don't know why I had written. See, that's, that's a, see how bland it looks if you don't put all that stuff on top uh -huh. of it? And it, it Turned well, out pretty does. good. Well, we'll but just go on ahead. I, want an, I insist upon having an egg and a gherkin on mine, even though the gherkin is one of those horrible ones. Where did you get those, by the way? Just know. something that you just bought? Yeah. Now, we better I not, used to make pickles all the time, but... We better not give Mr. Weird. Johnson that egg, you know. I I think hold that. You don't need it. No, we don't need it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. You can take that over on the table. I'm going to scoop out... Uh, what I did was I transferred mine over to uh, a different dish so I could heat it up today so we wouldn't have it cold because, you know, it takes a... Uh, well, that cold beef is real hard to chew. It takes a, a stock pot forever to get up to speed. But look at this. I think it's very pretty. I think it's quite lovely if I hadn't splattered it all over the, the world and back. But anyway, there it is. And it's, uh, it smells good, too. It really does. It smells just so delicious. And that wonderful sauce on top. Well, someone has dropped their pencil. So anyway, that's, uh, that's what it looks like. It's a real lovely presentation. I'm going to take it over, but that okay. doesn't necessarily mean that we well, have I've to go over there. Well, I've got this big bowl of 
mashed potatoes. Well, make sure you get it all out of there now. Well, I'm doing the best I can. Now dig around, make sure you get it all. <sighs> I can't think of a time I've needed a glass of water worse than right now. In case of the dry mouth for some reason. Oh, well, look, Doris is back with something. Come over here, let me see that. Doris has surprised us with cupcakes, uh -huh. and aren't we all excited and thrilled? <laughs> Let's look at these cupcakes. But there's we a have mystery five minutes, involved. Uh, we'll just, we'll take a, this was in the paper this weekend, and in, and uh, mm. I thought it, they turned out pretty good. It's carrot uh, muffins, but I think she used a bigger pan because mine are kind of little. I got a two dozen when you're only supposed to have one. More kind of ice, but, it's just a little large. Yeah, and it's just the, the, uh, the uh, cream cheese icing on top. Mm. It's, it's like little carrot cakes. What people don't realize is that Doris comes down here every week to, not only to help us out, but she also bakes all sorts of stuff for the crew. <laughs> and this is just something well, I guess you brought down. Well, I, for um, us. I thought that uh, this week they had a bunch of muffin recipes in the paper that, and that sounded really good. Well, they, I think she did real well with her. Uh, her, her recipes this week. Very good. Well, we'll take those and put them over put on the table, too. Okay, I may actually home. just take these directly to my car, to be quite honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> so anyway, we'll go over here and join Mr. Oh. Johnson at the old table. Well, well the potatoes look wonderful. Do, uh, do they have lots of garlic in them? They've got a whole head of garlic in mm. it, but you know, when the garlic cooks, it is tempered. It's not quite as Strong, as strong. Well. So don't be afraid of putting the whole uh, head of garlic in. How mm. they taste? I think they're yummy. More I think they ought to be. Just a little bit of salt, I believe, would be right nice. But uh, mm. oh, they really do have a. You don't get that. You don't get that garlic until it's gone down. Just mm -hmm. uh, about halfway down your gullet. Ooh, that's tasty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and easy to do. Any fool could do it, even you or your children. Well, let's see if this is, this thing is, move this spoon. The spoon is up my nose, the camera person says. I swear we have more time around here. Well, it's definitely done, I would certainly hope so. Mmm, and it's tender, and you know what? It tastes pretty much like I remembered it tasting in mm -hmm. high school. Mm. Except maybe a little better. It's incredibly easy to make. It really is. I really and truly, I never knew what it was. Now I'm going to try. I know you. We can't depend on you to try this wonderful, just, lovely salad. I'll try, but if I gag or something, go to another camera. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I think it, it is. I think it Why tastes real good. Why is it called Swiss steak? Well, I don't know. <coughs> Just is. <laughs> I don't know why it's called Swiss steak. I have no idea. But let me go down the hall and ask somebody. I'll well, you right know, there. over in Europe where a lot of this stuff originated, they don't have just tons of beef that's real tender. Oh. And a lot of the stuff has to be braised for a long time. Mm -hmm. And this is a braised dish. so. That's probably where it came from. Well, and as we discussed, the schools, you know, used to, mm -hmm. I guess they still do, use a lot of government issue stuff, uh, food. And you're right, it does cover up a multiplicity of sins, and it also takes what might be an otherwise pretty gnarly piece of meat and turns it tenderizes mm -hmm. it because it cooks so slow. Mm -mm -mm. That is really tasty. Well, I think I'm going to try one of these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a piece of one a while ago. It was delicious. Before we went on air? Mm-hmm. Huh. Mm. Mm. Oh, Doris. Mm. That's just filled with all sorts of good stuff. Well, I think it's a pretty good meal. It is. It's real good. You could serve this to the preacher on Sunday or any of your fine friends and be perfectly uh, easy about doing it. You know, you can put your slow cooker on early in the morning before you go to work or, you know, you go about your affairs and, and you can do these mashed potatoes uh, or you could do the salad the night before and the mashed potatoes when you get home before they, they're served. Mashed potatoes is something that doesn't keep very well, so you want to make that the last thing you do. Yeah. And then, of course, if you got cold mashed potatoes, you can make potato cakes the next day, which mm -hmm. are awfully good, too. Oh, but these have got a wonderful, wonderful flavor. 
You can say that again, and All in right. fact, I wish you would. These have a wonderful flavor. <laughs> well, that's it. Mm -hmm. Just when you thought there couldn't be any more, there isn't. Thank you, and goodbye.